It sounds astonishing, it sounds psychic, but it isn't. These neurons are called mirror neurons. So the neuron fires when I reach for a cup and when I watch you reach for a cup. So what's a mirror neuron doing? When I saw this paper, I jumped off my seat because it's what, what the neuron is signaling to the higher areas in the brain is, the higher areas are saying, the same neuron is firing now as would fire when you reach and grab a cup. Therefore, that's what that person is intending to do. So it's a mind-reading neuron. It's a neuron that's creating a virtual reality simulation of another person's mind, empathizing with the other person, so to speak, which is the basis of compassion, after all. So it allows you to take, look at the world from the other person's point of view, and uh, temporarily, of course. Now, it's interesting that while you do this, you don't actually leave your body and float out in space and look at another person. Why is that? The reason is the mirror neuron activity is partially inhibited by other signals coming from the frontal lobes, which say, look, empathize, put yourself in that person's shoes, view the world from that person's point of view, but don't literally leave your body. Through, a, through practices like meditation, maybe you temporarily suspend that inhibition, so you're able to genuinely adopt another person's point of view, therefore achieve genuine compassion or empathy. There are also mirror neurons in the parietal lobe, posteriorly, in the back of the brain, which are sensory neurons. But some of the sensory neurons will fire if somebody touches your holiness and I'm watching, the neuron fires. So again, it's an empathy neuron. If somebody pokes me with, with a needle, my anterior cingulate neurons fire, and I say, ouch, and I withdraw my hand. But if somebody pokes you with a needle, some of these same neurons fire, saying, my God, the same thing is happening to him as would happen if somebody were to poke me with a needle. Let me be compassionate, let me be empathetic. But I don't literally feel the pain. When somebody pokes you with a needle, and I partially experience the pain, but I don't literally feel it, that's again because the skin in my hand has receptors signaling back to the brain, look, you're not being poked, don't worry. Empathize by all means, but don't worry, you're not being poked. So I don't, when I watch you being poked, I don't say, ouch, and withdraw my hand. The reason I don't feel your pain when I'm watching it, even though my pain neurons are firing, is because my skin is informing the brain, you're not being poked, so don't worry. But if somebody were to amputate my arm, right, then I have a phantom arm, and then I watch you being poked, that inhibitory signal from the hand is removed, so now I literally feel the pain, and I say, ouch, and withdraw my phantom. We've actually shown this in a number of experiments. So now I literally start experiencing your pain. So the compassion becomes almost literal. It's no longer metaphorical, simply by removing the skin. The astonishing implication of this is the only barrier between your consciousness and my consciousness, shunyata, the only barrier between your consciousness and my consciousness is my bloody skin. Remove the skin, <laughs> our minds start blending with each other, and I start experiencing your mental phenomena. So this gives you a genuine scientific basis for phenomena like empathy, but it's possible through meditation and through other practices to diminish this inhibition. And then I start, my empathy becomes even greater, and I develop actual genuine compassion, genuine empathy, something that will be useful during these troubled times in our world.